Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So we are in Croatia now. We um, got here a few days ago, or maybe longer. I'm not sure how long it's been. Okay, it's been a while. Maybe it's been, we got, we got to Croatia recently, um, less than a week ago. And you know, I usually love to film outside, but uh, it's kind of a rainy gray day today. So I'll do this video inside. And this one is all about a Q&A. I know it's long overdue and I apologize for that. It's been a pretty intense summer and I'm sure not just for me, but uh, it's, it's all good. And I'm here to answer some of your questions that you've sent me from Facebook, from Instagram, and definitely from YouTube. So without further ado, let's get started. First question I'm going to read comes from YouTube and this is from Nature Girl. And she says, Dear Chini, I have a question. Do you think eating raw is also good in a colder climate, especially in the winter when there is not really any fresh food locally available? I love this question. Thank you for sending it to us. So the first thing I want to get clear is that if you feel great on a cooked vegan, a healthy cooked vegan diet, please continue to do so in the winter time or in a cold climate. If you're eating healthy, nutrient-dense foods, um, sweet potatoes, root vegetables like that, um, or whole grains that, that are good for your system and do well with your system, as well as lots of vegetables, and you like to cook them and feel good that way, please continue to do so. That being said, if you're somebody who prefers eating a raw vegan diet, and feels like you thrive on that and want to try to do that in a cold climate or in the winter time, you can absolutely do so if you have fruit available to you. So here's a story, which is that I actually was raw, I became raw when I was still living in New York City. I lived in New York for 10 years and I became raw and then I went into winter in New York. And I will tell you that that was my best, that was the beginning of my best winters in New York. The winters where I was eating cooked food were actually really rough for me. And I think that it's because I felt my best eating a raw vegan diet. And I was eating a healthy raw vegan diet, I wanna say, really anti-inflammatory, um, lots of fruits, lots of greens, a healthy amount of nuts and seeds. And because of this, my circulation improved, I felt lighter, I felt more energetic, and so I was able to navigate the cold climate really, really well. I used to suffer from something called Raynaud's phenomenon, which is where you have um, your vessels and your fingers and your toes can clamp down, and so you get extra cold. My fingers would turn literally blue, um, and I had a hard time again dealing with the winters in New York. When I went raw, my circulation improved because it was such a healthier diet for me, that my circulation improved and uh, I stopped suffering from Raynaud's significantly. So that's just motivation to say that if you feel your best eating raw, then doing that in a cold climate is absolutely doable. And if you want to do so, I have a few tips that I wanna share with you now for eating raw in a cold climate. Number one is definitely eating a healthy raw vegan diet, a nutrient-dense raw vegan diet, and eating enough calories and enough food during that time. Lots of greens. Um, I love fruit, so I was eating lots of bananas, I was eating lots of dates. I had access to papayas and mangoes in New York, and I did just that. So eating a nutrient-dense, um, calorie-sufficient diet is really important. My second tip is that you also include warming foods and warming spices and herbs. So I included ginger and cinnamon and having peppermint tea. So I definitely allowed myself hot herbal teas with peppermint and mint, hot ginger tea, but also adding ginger to my salad dressings and my sauces adding um, cinnamon. I would sprinkle cinnamon on bananas. I would cut up bananas, make banana milk, pour that over my bananas, sprinkle cinnamon on top, and it was amazing. One other thing I wanna say about warming in general, 
outside of warming spices and herbs is that your food can be warm. It doesn't have to be cold. So I would take out my veggies and my lettuce from the refrigerator um, a few hours before I ate so I wasn't having a cold salad. I would blend my raw soup in a blender and in a Vitamix and it would be warm enough without being hot so that I would have a warm soup. So there are ways of eating raw food without it being uncomfortably cold. Another tip, a really important tip, is to move your body. Move a lot during the winter time. Um, I love exercising during the winter time and I would start jogging outside. If you can jog or move in nature, that also will help to acclimate to the winter time, to the colder climate. So I would do my dance practice outside with lots of layers. I would go for jogs in the park with lots of layers. So moving more, extremely important for increasing circulation and um, helping to stay warm. The best way to stay warm is to really increase your core temperature and nothing does that better, I think, than exercise naturally. One more tip that I think doesn't get spoken about enough about being raw in the winter time or in cold climates is that cold climates and winter usually means low sun. And if that's the case, you're not getting a lot of sun, I really, especially if you're symptomatic, which means if you're having symptoms of um, especially things like chronic fatigue, um, achy joints, or you just feel off and you just don't feel like you're yourself, it might be worth getting a vitamin D level checked. And I recommend the vitamin D 25 hydroxy level specifically to be checked. And if it's low, to replete it, to replete it, which means get a vitamin D supplement and take it. I'm definitely a person as a holistic medical doctor that, that believes that you should get your vitamin sources from the original source. So in the case of vitamin D, sunshine. But if you can't do that because of the climate you're in and or your levels are so low, please just take the supplement. There are vegan vitamin D3 supplements out there. Take it, you will feel much better if your vitamin D is low. So those are my tips for navigating uh, winter and cold climates when raw. I hope that's helpful for you. Second question. Um, this question I believe came from Facebook. I don't have it in front of me, but basically the person was asking about how to naturally treat or heal cracked heels. And I really liked this question because I think it's something that doesn't get talked about enough. It's really, really common. And for most people who have cracked heels, I recommend basically the following. One, increasing your moisture from the inside out. So making sure you're getting enough hydration. And that can be through good water and or high fruits, high water fruits and vegetables because your heels are your skin. They're part of your skin. And getting that water in internally does actually help externally with dryness. The second tip is moisturizing externally your heels. Um, your heels are an area of your body that doesn't have uh, sweat glands. And so it's really important that you can also moisturize topically. My two go-to moisturizers for the heels are uh, coconut oil and shea butter. And a tip I like to say, especially in the winter time, is to put some shea butter, coconut oil, put some socks on and then go to sleep and that will really help with absorbing that. You can also do it right after a shower or a bath, putting on that moisturizer. And really staying away from um, chemically laden, preservative laden, artificial moisturizers is really important because that can end up actually drying the skin out more and um, increasing the, the need for moisture in those areas of the body. Another tip is to just, along the lines of moisturizing and water, is to make sure that you're taking not too hot baths or showers. So keeping the water level tepid or cool. If you like hot baths, just turn the temperature down just a little bit and then at the end finishing with a cool wash. Because if you are doing hot showers and baths for too long, that will dry out your skin, including your heels. The last thing I want to say about cracked heels is that if you're doing all the right things, you're eating a really healthy diet and it's full of water and you are moisturizing and your and your showers are not too hot, but you're just having chronic 
cracked heels and especially if they're painful or you're getting fissures. Fissures are just basically deep lines in the skin that are um, grooves in the skin that can be very painful. It is worth going to get them checked out and specifically getting some blood tests to make sure you're not having any vitamin or mineral deficiencies or any hormone imbalances especially something like hypothyroidism or low thyroid levels. This can cause cracked heels. Um, zinc deficiency is just one of many mineral deficiencies that can lead to cracked heels. So cracked heels can be a signal to something greater and systemic happening. So it's really important if you're suffering from them and it's not getting better with all these changes, that you go get it checked out and get some levels and some blood tests done to make sure everything is okay. And the last question, the third question, is on fostering a dance practice. This is somebody, I think through YouTube, who asked me, how do you foster a dance practice? And I'm gonna keep this brief, but if you have further questions about my dance practice, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer or make more videos on this. If you wanna foster your own dan dance practice, here are just a couple of tips. Number one, know your reasons for why. Why are you having a dance practice? And I say that because that can really help you to craft the kind of dance practice that's right for you. So for example, if your why is because you want to audition for and belong to a, and become part of a dance company, that will then change your dance practice. You might need to be going to a certain dance class um, that is in the style of the dance company that you want to be part of. If you, however, are wanting a dance practice because you are trying to heal anxiety, that looks like a very different dance practice, right? Or if you're doing it because you would like more joy in your life or you would like to um, heal lower back pain, that looks like a different dance practice. So knowing your why can be very helpful for crafting your specific dance practice. The second tip I would say is that make your dance practice something that's accessible, meaning that if your dance class that you wanna to go to is, a, is around the corner from you, awesome. But if it takes you three trains and a bus ride to get to a dance class, find another way of having a dance practice because it's really important that you are consistent with your dance practice. That's my second tip, consistency, doing it regularly, whether it's three times a week or every day, doing it regularly will help you foster your practice because practice is all about practicing. So regularity is really important. And the third thing I would say really quickly about fostering a dance practice is have it be really enjoyable. Have it be something that you love to do, whether it's, whether it's a class you're going to or dancing your bedroom. Make sure that it's something you love to do and that you're moving in a way that feels really good. It can be very challenging. I have dance classes that are very challenging for my body, but I, love it and I have such joy and I feel energized after it. So if that's not happening for you, switch it up so that it becomes just that for you. I hope all of the, the questions have been helpful for you. One or all of the questions have been helpful for you. Just to say that more Q&As are coming. I know you've asked me questions. They will be answered soon. But I hope you found this video helpful and useful and supportive to your health and happiness. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody who you think would benefit, and definitely subscribe for more videos. As always, much love to you.